the scale should be assessed from the first time the patient's encountered, and it should be repeated. And the frequency of repeating recording varies according to the person's condition. If they appear to be stable, then the frequency can be reduced. But in the early stage, in picking up deterioration or improvement, it needs to be more frequent. It's particularly important to record it if there's been a change in management so that the benefit or otherwise of the effect of management can be assessed. The extent of change that uh, should make a nurse alarmed differs according to what the change is. If there's a change in the motor part of the scale by at least one step, then that is quite significant. Likewise, a change in the verbal uh, assessment by one step is also important. But if it's eye-opening, and uh, for example, the person may be simply asleep at one stage, awake at another stage, then that isn't so important. So with the eye response, perhaps it's two steps that would be a clear signal to inform a doctor. It's always useful to have the change reassessed by another person to confirm it's true, and that adds to the significance of any observed uh, alteration. So how can we tell whether a patient is just asleep or whether they're drowsy as a result of an altered level of consciousness? You have to make sure you give a patient every opportunity to wake up if they are asleep and this is particularly important at night. Mm. Um, so give the patient every opportunity to wake up and then if they're still drowsy then you may assume that that is a, a due to an altered level of consciousness as opposed to being asleep. Right. So how do we assess eye open if a patient has facial fractures? If a patient's got bilateral fractures around their orbits it, it, and there's a lot of swelling, it can be difficult to assess an eye opening response. And um, when that's the situation, we would record um, C under mm -hmm. eye opening response, under under no response. Mm -hmm. uh, if a patient's got a tracheostomy tube or an endotracheal tube in situ, you obviously can't record a verbal response. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend doing in that situation is under verbal response, under the no response section, recording a T. If a patient is dysphasic, it's difficult to reliably assess whether or not they are orientated to time, place and person. So in, in that situation, what we'd recommend doing would be scoring D mm -hmm. and the verbal response section as no response. And how do we assess best motor response if, for example, a patient has a flexion response in one arm and an extension response in the other? Um, we are looking for the best motor response. So in that situation, you would record a flexion response mm -hmm. as the best motor response. Best the use of the term the best mode response in the scale has two significances. The first is that as you examine someone, sometimes their response gets higher the more you stimulate them. If that's the case, then you record the best you find during the examination. The second thing is that sometimes people with focal brain damage will have a difference in the response on the two sides. In that case, it's the better side that goes into the coma scale recording the worst side is recorded elsewhere as an indication of the focal lesion. We recommend using superorbital bridge pressure. That method allows you to get a true localising response and it's repeatable and because it doesn't cause any further damage to the patient. When you see things like sternal rub, you can quite often see bruising associated with those forms of painful stimuli, mm -hmm. so we would recommend against using those. Mm -hmm. In the presence of facial fractures, when you clearly can't use suborbital ridge mm -hmm. pressure, um, and that's, in that case we would recommend pinching the ELO, again because you can get a true localising response and, and it's something that wouldn't cause any further damage to the patient. If someone isn't responding to speech, either by opening their eyes or obeying commands, the next thing to do is to assess their response to physical stimulus. The first thing to do is to apply pressure on the bed of the nail of one of the fingers using a pencil or pen. And this provides a very good stimulus that can be used consistently. It also will be a very good way of seeing if the patient opens their eyes. The next step after that is to go to pressure on the superorbital notch or behind the ear of the stylo process using the thumb. If a patient's pupils are reacting to light, we use a positive sign. If a patient's pupils are unreactive to light or fixed, we write a negative sign. What is meant by the sluggish pupil then? 
A sluggish pupil is when one pupil reacts slower in comparison to the other pupil. So that mm. means you can only get one sluggish pupil. Mm. Uh, we record that on the chart as S mm. for sluggish. But like I say, it's important to remember that you can only get one sluggish pupil. And finally, how do we document the Glasgow Coma Scale? And we document the Glasgow Coma Scale on a 15 point Glasgow Coma Scale chart using black ink for photocopying purposes. Right, okay. If a region chooses to adopt a score, then that should be by agreement between the neurosurgery and the referring hospitals, so it's always clear which one's being used. One of the benefits uh, in using the scale is that the scale can be fitted to the, the patient, uh, and patients have all sorts of variations that can make it impossible to apply a rigid system. Uh, in some people, one part of the scale may not be accessible. If you do the three parts separately, that is no problem. If you try and summate the information simply into some total system, then the system breaks down and the information is lost. The whole basis of the scale is to monitor the patient, which means detecting change. So they should be applied as soon as possible and repeated as appropriate. In the early stage, that can be quite often particularly if someone's had an intervention, such as improving hypoxia, um, or if there's a worry about deterioration. As time passes, the score can be uh, assessed uh, less frequently. Patients' uh, severity of brain damage, as summarised in the overall score, shows very good correlations with a number of features. It correlates very strongly with outcome. It strongly correlates with the risk of complications in the early stage. Uh, the lower the score, the more likelihood there is of extracranial complications such as hypoxia, hypotension, the more likelihood there is of intracranial complications such as hematoma. It also correlates very closely with other indices of brain damage such as intracranial pressure, cerebral metabolism, electrical activity and so on. I think one of the factors in the success of the coma scale is that it's the right compromise between complexity and simplicity and because it's flexible and because it means something to the people actually looking after the patient.